Liquidity Ratios Problem 4. Mango Inc.'s cost of goods sold for the year is $2,900,000 and the average merchandise inventory for the year is $133,000. Calculate the inventory turnover ratio of the company. The inventory turnover ratio is part of the liquidity analysis, the different ratios under liquidity analysis, which focus on current assets and current liabilities, how quickly a company can pay off its current liabilities of its current assets. Now within liquidity analysis, we have the current analysis, we've got the inventory analysis and the accounts receivable analysis. Of course, this focuses on the inventory analysis because it's inventory turnover ratio. There are two real different ratios in inventory analysis, but we're looking at a company's ability to manage its inventory effectively, and that's what inventory analysis is all about. The two different ratios are inventory turnover ratio and the number of days sales in inventory. The number of days sales in inventory is ultimately the more important of the two because it actually takes into account the inventory turnover ratio itself. Now, one thing to note is that a company doesn't, the idea here is a company is trying to evaluate or creditors or people outside the business, whoever's looking at this, managers, whoever it is, stakeholders, they're trying to determine how quickly the inventory is coming in and going out in terms of being sold. The idea here is that excess inventory does the following. It decreases liquidity by tying up funds, cash, and inventory. It increases insurance expense, property taxes, storage costs, and other related expenses, and increases the risk of losses because of price declines or obsolescence of the actual inventory or spoilage, different things like that. So the idea is that the inventory should be quickly, it should be gone fast. You want to get it out of here. And some companies use just-in-time inventory to try to reduce these types of issues and, and, you know, in terms of storing the inventory and space and paying for all these fees like property taxes, insurance expense, uh, having to pay for a warehouse, all these different types of things. So these ratios are extremely important. So this question is just focusing on the inventory turnover ratio. There will be another question that focuses on the day sales and inventory, um, that calculation. So just keep that in mind again, that those are both of the calculations. The inventory turnover ratio, that formula, all we do, we take cost of goods sold. So we take the cost of goods sold for the year or for the period that we're looking at, if it's a quarter or if it's a week, whatever it is, cost of goods sold over. So numerator cost of goods sold, denominator is going to be the average merchandise inventory, the average merchandise inventory. So if you're looking at a period of one year, you take the average of that time or a week, because as we know, merchandise inventory is on the balance sheet and the balance sheet, it takes a snapshot on a specific date. So if you're trying to compare apples and oranges in terms of a date with the cost of goods sold income statement, which is a change over time, you've got to do an averaging of the time to take into account that period because you can't just look at cost of goods sold on a specific day. That would not, you know, and then compare it to merchandise inventory on that day. That wouldn't make sense. You could do a period of time of cost of goods sold and then compare it to a change in average merchandise inventory. So here we know those numbers are given to us. Cost of goods sold is $2.9 million, so $2.9 million. And that's going to be over the average merchandise inventory, which we're told is $133,000. So boom, real simple calculation. We're going to um, take $2.9 million over $133,000, and we're going to get 21.80 or 21.8 times. So the inventory turnover ratio is 21.8 times. And the idea here is cost of goods sold, which inventory goes into cost of goods sold. That's the inventory going out. It basically it's turned over 21.8 times to get to cost of goods sold, which this is a good number. The idea here is that you don't want to have a super high inventory and a super low cost of goods sold. You want to get your inventory out quick. So the faster, the, the again, you can get your inventory out, the better it's going to be in terms of efficiency and saving these various expenses. Again, there'll be another video that focuses on the day sales and inventory, which is something that we focus on and more, more in practice, but you still need to know this inventory turnover ratio to get there as well.